Hey everyone, thank you for watching. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the latest process for joining a Cisco WebEx meeting. It's 2021. The client has been updated over the years. A couple fine-tuned uh, adjustments have come down more recently. I want to give you the latest and show you how to get started with WebEx. Let's dive in and check it out right now. All right, so first things first is the meeting invite. Now you will notice that this meeting invite looks very similar to prior meeting invites. I will call your attention to the key features, however. Uh, first, the green join button is uh, pretty easy to figure out. Just double click that baby when you're ready to join. There's also the meeting URL here as well. So all you gotta do is click it and uh, you're ready to go. There is also the ability to just go to webex.com and type in uh, the access code, or if you call in and you need the access code, you can dial that as well. Notice it is actually no longer nine digits, but instead 10 digit. There is a meeting password. So again, if you go to webex.com, type in this access code, you will need to type the password as well. Uh, I don't know very many people that do that, particularly when you can just click the link above. Uh, if you dial in with a phone only, there is a password for phones that you can type into your keypad. Uh, next, if you're dialing in with voice only from a cell phone, this is actually really convenient. You can dial the phone number or, or you can just click this or tap this from your cell phone's uh, screen. It will dial the phone number. And then there are two commas, and this is essentially a two second pause, right? One second per comma, the meeting ID, pound, the password and then pound again to submit that whole that whole string right if you open up your email on your cell phone and you tap that that will get you in voice only uh, now of course we have a mobile app that can be used with webex but again voice only you have that as an option depending on your organization settings there are global call-in numbers that you can click to see uh, those details i am in the u.s so i have a u.s call-in number right here Last but not least, there are some uh, additional details here to call in with video endpoints. So anything that is SIP based or a Skype client can actually dial this as well. Uh, again, it's that 10 digit number at webex.com. It's been shortened. So it's just at webex.com in all cases. This is actually what also drives one button to push on your video endpoints, which I have another video on uh, how to get that up and running. Let's go ahead and click the meeting URL and get this meeting kicked off. As your meeting starts to load, you're going to see a very familiar screen. Not a whole lot has changed here. Uh, as that loads, you, the client will load and you're going to see a screen that looks like this. Again, not terribly different, uh, different than maybe you're used to in the past, but there are a couple things I do want to draw to your attention. Uh, first, across the bottom, the settings are preserved from uh, meeting to meeting. So if you started a meeting before with your audio on mute, which is how I'm set up now, with your um, video on, right, those settings are preserved here. Now you can toggle them, you can switch cameras, you can stop the video, uh, you know, do all that type of thing. Uh, inside of this little drop down for audio, you can actually come in and select settings. And there's some additional settings here and kind of diagnostics to help you ensure that you're off on the right foot when you uh, are dropped into the meeting. So for instance, you can test your audio. Hear a little music play there. Uh, you can also test record yourself and it'll play back so that you can hear that you were in fact recorded. Uh, I mentioned background noise removal in another video that I did. This option is on by default now, which is great. Takes out that crying baby, lawnmower, uh, you know, background noise type of thing. Uh, you do have music mode as well. So this is something that if you're singing or playing an instrument or maybe sharing content that has a particular, um, you know, music or something in it, you can use that. Uh, when you're done with this, simply hit the X, jump back to the um, the main screen here. Now, if you are sitting in front of a video endpoint and that video endpoint hasn't been scheduled, uh, but you want to use that video endpoint, you can actually connect to the video endpoint. And uh, here you can see near, nearby devices, Adam's office, I can actually uh, select it. And then when I hit join meeting, my video will be on that device and will be used for the meeting. Uh, if you do this and you say, hey, you know, I really don't want to do that, you can just hit disconnect, you're right back to where you started. If you want to use audio of some other variety, uh, your computer audio is, uh, is clearly a good option, uh, assuming you have a good connection on your computer. You can actually have the meeting call you back as well. So uh, you could just uh, put your phone number in here, whatever it might be, 
change your country code if, uh, if applicable, and uh, have it call you back. You can call in. Now this allows you to uh, get into the meeting and then dial the phone number, and the phone number is available uh, once you're in the meeting, uh, if you choose to do that. I don't necessarily recommend that because it is uh, a bit tedious, but uh, hey, whatever uh, whatever you're into. Lastly, you can do don't connect audio uh, at all. Now, if you're in a room with other people who are in the same meeting, or maybe the video endpoint in the room is in the meeting, but you want the content right in front of you, this is the my recommendation. Now, you want to be extra sure that you don't enable audio uh, twice in the same room or you'll get feedback. So definitely be aware of that. I'm going to join this meeting with computer audio uh, by uh, selecting it and just hitting the join button. Once you join the meeting, you will see the other participants. Now this is me here. I have my video off. And on this other side here, I is also me. Uh, I am joined with my phone right here. Uh, so you can see the video participants immediately upon coming into the uh, the meeting. Uh, you can change the layout up here and do focus if you want to focus on that person who is the active speaker. Again, my uh, my phone is acting as the active speaker uh, right now. You see the names of everyone and you see their role in the meeting. Uh, so I am a host. My phone or my mobile phone is a co-host. You can of course see the full roster on the side here under participants. Uh, and they will be enumerated down the side. Of course, here I am connected with computer audio with a little headset. There is a little phone indicating the uh, the other instance of Adam Schaefer is a uh, you know a uh, coming from a mobile device, and uh, you can see that the individuals are both muted. Jumping back to the bottom, of course, mute uh, and unmute of video and audio are both. Uh, at the same place as they were before the meeting starts, so not a whole lot of reason to go into more depth there. You can share content by selecting the share button, uh, and you can share your entire screen, or you can share your individual application. If you're a host, you have the ability to record. That's pretty straightforward. You also have reactions, so if you want to uh, you know, give a thumbs up into the meeting, you can certainly do that. You can actually uh, very shortly be able to actually enable gestures as well. So what this is, is uh, the ability to uh, simply give a thumbs up and that will be recognized as the gesture. A few other things to be aware of, breakout sessions. You can toggle breakout sessions on. You can actually copy the meeting link information and maybe you want to send it in an instant messaging client or something like that to get someone else looped into the meeting. You can do that right here. You can invite and remind. So folks who uh, you want to add maybe to the meeting, you can uh, remind them or send a new invite via email with this option. You can lock the meeting. Cool thing is you can actually lock scheduled meetings now as well. So this is really good. Again, another layer of security that uh, you should definitely be aware of. If you want to connect to a video system after you're already into the meeting, uh, you can actually do that right here. It's going to work very similar, similarly to what we saw before the meeting. Finally, if you want to switch audio, you can come in here, uh, disconnect your computer audio, and now you have the option to uh, come in and put in that uh, phone number uh, again if you, uh, if you need to. Lastly, when you are done with your meeting, leaving is very simple. Click the red X uh, and you can drop out of the meeting. One thing to be very uh, careful with if you're a co-host or a host, uh, you are prompted to end the meeting for uh, everyone or just yourself. So you want to leave the meeting. Uh, if you wanna close it down, then you click end the meeting. So be very careful with this. Uh, but typically the one that's highlighted is the safer of the two options. So we're gonna hit leave. All right, so I covered a lot of information in a very short period of time. If you have questions, comments, other tips or tricks on using WebEx, please leave them in the video comment section below. I have a whole bunch of other videos about WebEx using some of the you know, different features more specifically, how to use it with video endpoints, that type of thing. So be sure to check out some of my other content. If you're new here, subscribe. And uh, I wanna thank you for watching. Hopefully this has been informative and we'll see you back sometime soon.